Hi everyone and welcome to UCTV Alive for Kids. It's great to have your company again today. I'm Dr Louise Grimmer from the University of Tasmania and I'm really excited today because we've got a special guest in. His name is Dave McNamara. He's from Mount Carmel College. Welcome to Alive for Kids, Dave. Thanks, Louise. It's wonderful to have you in today because you're going to be talking to us about something that I love, which is music. And the title of your presentation today is Drop the Beat. And you're going to be teaching us how to make a pop music beat using technology. That's the plan. It yep. sounds really, really <laughs> exciting. Just a reminder, everybody, that Dave's going to give his presentation and then we will have a break for five minutes and you can think about some questions that you would like to ask Dave and you put those questions, as you know, up on the chat function. And if you could put your first name and your school, that would be absolutely wonderful. So, Dave, before we start with your presentation, I'm going to ask you a few things about yourself. Okay. So you're a music teacher at Mount Carmel. I am. How did you become interested in music? Uh, I started learning the piano when I was five, and then uh, just as I as I kind of grew up, I started getting in, interested in different instruments, different styles of music. So I started playing the trumpet in a town brass band. Oh wow! And then when I hit year ten, I started playing guitar in a rock band. Cool. And uh, it, the uh, the rest just went from there. And you also play an interesting. Well, you play a lot of instruments, but there's one that I think is fantastic, which is the the piano accordion. Piano accordion. Yeah, that's what I play in a few bands in Hobart. Oh wow. Uh, yeah, I, I learnt that instrument because I was a piano student in Melbourne at the conservatorium there, and I, um, I had a girlfriend who's now my wife, who said to me she wanted to go travelling and busking around oh. Europe, and she plays violin. So that's a great accompanying well, instrument. She said to me, if you want to come, you need to learn a smaller <laughs> instrument other than piano. And so I picked the accordion. And that's a great, it's like a sort of portable piano. That's right. Oh, that's wonderful. Mm. Well, Dave, I think we should get underway with your presentation. Okay. All right, take it away. Sounds good. So we'll go to the first slide there. So uh, today we're going to look at making music out of, out of randomness, essentially, adding some order to, uh, to the choices that we have in the, in the program I'm going to show you. Uh, so, basically, um, with this program, which is called Learning Music by Ableton, uh, you, can, you can enter random notes in and it's going to sound okay, but it's never going to sound like organised pop music unless we kind of learn a few little rules and formulas. So we might switch across to the Ableton, and I'm just going to put some random notes in here to demonstrate what I mean by that. Um, with the program, you'll see the line goes constantly and then it loops back when it gets to the end. There we go. So if I just put some random sounds in here, put a couple in a row there. <laughs> so it's just, you know, it keeps going constantly, but it doesn't sound like any particular type of music at this point. So I'm going to just clear that and stop it. And we'll go back to the slides there. Um, back to the Google slide. <laughs> in a sec, there we go. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so um, to, organ to organize our sounds here in pop music, you've got four layers of sound, Louise. We've got at the bottom level, we've got the drums or the, that's the beat. Yeah. Uh, and then you can add a bass line on top of that. Some essential. <laughs> essential, right? Uh, some chords after that, and then uh, if you if you have time, if we have time today, we'll put a little melody over the top of that as well. When you listen to pop music, I've got their zoom in with your ears. It's it's an it's an interesting idea when you look at a piece of art or you look out a window. Let's say you're looking out the window and you can see a tree with a bird in it. You can zoom in kind of with your eyes and focus on the bird. And with music, you could do the same thing. You can zoom in on the bass mm. with your ears and mm. you can zoom in on the melody. Um, and so hopefully we'll be able to do a bit of that today. Okay, so we're going to go to the drums first and we've got three ideas there that I'm going to show you that, that starts to get, get our drum beats organised. So four on the floor. Oh, is what the does that mean? Thing. What does that mean, Dave, four, four on, the on the floor? Four on the floor is the term that we use for um, having a kick drum, which is the lowest sounding drum, on each of the main beats in the bar. Ah, okay. And in most pop music, there's four beats in the bar. And you can see I've got a darker shaded bar here and then a lighter shaded bar here. Yeah. This is called grid notation, when you've got a grid like this. Uh, and now if I press play, so I've deliberately chosen the first little box next to the darker line. Yeah. And now we've got a steady beat 
So that's called four on the floor. We call it four on and the floor. And you'd be doing that if you were playing, <clears throat> pardon me, drums. That's the one that you're um, hitting with your foot. Yeah, with Is your right, right foot. That's yep. correct. Nice work there. Yep. <laughs> uh, and, now, and so uh, the next thing we can add is the backbeat and the backbeat often happens on the snare, snare which is the drum that sits right in right in between the drummer's legs right, right in the front yep. there. and that happens on every second beat at the same time oh, as the kick okay. so we'll skip the first one yep do the second skip one skip another one oh cool we've got a pretty familiar starting sounding. to sound yeah that's right yep. that's four on the floor and the backbeat and then the next thing we can do is add a hi-hat now we've got two options in this program, the closed hat and the open hat. Now we could just select every single cell and it's going to be pretty high energy. I'll just do that now. <laughs> okay, so we start to get a little bit more in the texture there. I'm going to just put it on every second hi-hat and we'll see what that changes to. Oh, uh, yep. A bit more like a standard drum beat and some of our viewers may may play the drum kit and might know a straight eight drum beat and this is very similar to this one. And Dave, on the drum, is that the, is that the cymbals? Right, the hi-hat is the... The, the hi-hat? It's the, 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 right, the cymbals that close together. The cymbals together. that close together, yeah, that's and right. so you, you do something that make, that make them open and close, yeah, is that right? Yeah, there's a little pedal with yeah, your left with, foot. So that's with your left foot, yeah. Exactly, yeah. So, hey, in a nutshell, that's how we can create a really stock standard pop drum beat. Yeah. Which is our first layer of sound. In, in our beat. So we're going to go back now to the uh, back to the slide, if that's okay. And we're going to come and adjust that drum beat a bit later, but we'll move on to chords. Now with pop music, you know, you've got all the options for chords that, that there are thousands of different <laughs> chords you can choose. So we want to just reduce our options down to four main ones. And these four numbers are important. One, four, five, and six. Okay. And okay. Basically, every, uh, uh, how I, actually I think what we might do is skip over to Ableton again now and I'll demonstrate that with the grid. One, four, five and six, you've got to remember that Louise, because okay. you're going to help me to, uh, I'm writing to it compose down. this. <laughs> I'm going to go to the chord section and Louise, we've got here the alphabet starting from C, D, yes. E, F, G, A, B and then we get back to C. You'll notice C is in purple each time. Yes. And we're going to think of C as number one. Okay. That's our number one chord. Yep. Now, four would be C, D, E, F, because it's the fourth one up. Yes. One, two, three, four. Five is G. Yes. And six is going to be A. A. And okay. technically, the six is a, is a minor chord. But that's not so essential for today. So can you do me a favour and just pick one of those four numbers? Four is my favourite number. I'm going to start with four, <laughs> and I'm going to make it a long note that goes for two beats Two main beats, okay? And now pick another one for me. Um, five. Five, good choice. <laughs> okay, another one? Six. Okay. And then back to one, maybe? And then back to one. Okay, yeah. we'll put it down the bottom here. All right, so now, just a single note. We're not yet with chords. This is gonna be our chord progression. It sounded good. It's going to sound fine, okay. What I, yeah, let's leave it like that. Or well, you can change it, Dave. Well, I think this will be fine. Yeah, well, you're the composer here, so we're <laughs> going to stick with that. Okay. Now, if we just go <laughs> back, to the, back to the slide for a second. The next step on there, it says start with root notes. Now, what I've just done is start with the root notes, which means if it's a four chord, you put the four note in there. Yeah. Now we have to build the triads. And a triad, like a tricycle, is a bike that has three wheels. Uh, a triangle is a shape that has three sides. A triad is a, a chord that has three notes. Oh, okay. And we're going to do that using this system. We can think of it either as traffic lights or the Monday, Wednesday, Friday system. And okay. I'll show you what that means. If we go back to Ableton, it's as simple as this. We've got the root note. We skip the next one and we put the, th the next note in. Then we skip another one. Oh, okay. And all of a sudden we've got, they don't really look like traffic lights because they're kind of squashed <laughs> flat, but I think of them as traffic lights. So that's a chord. This is a, this is a chord, oh. a type of chord called a triad. And then we could do that for each of, the, uh, each of the notes that you've chosen. Four, five, six, and then one. And now let's see what we've got. Oh, 
I think that sounds wonderful. You, you've composed well. <laughs> we'll put our drum beat with it just to see how it sounds. And all of a sudden, we're starting to get a little pop beat happening. Dave, we could have a hit record. We might have. <laughs> the UCTV Alive for Kids hit single. All right. We could have a theme tune for the show. <laughs> this could be it, okay. <laughs> Um, all right, so we're not quite there yet because we've just got the chords and we've got the drum beat. So we'll go back to the slide and moving on to oh, bass lines. Bass. Bass line. Now you see that word root notes there again. That's We already did that with the chords, so now we're going to do it with the, uh, with the bass. So we'll go back to Ableton. And you chose the fourth mm. chord first. Now it's important with the bass line yes. that we do the same chords in the same place. Okay. Okay. So if you forget, you could look back here and I can see the bottom one's an F. Yes. Now this time I'm just going to put just a single note in there. Oh, I love that sound. You like that one? Yes, I, I do like the bass. So you went F <laughs> and then you went to G, which was yep. five. One, two, three, four, five. Then you went to six. And then you chose one at the end. I see you're doing it every second. Yeah. Yeah, just yep. at the beginning of each of the yep. of the beats, you can see they they line up when the chord changes. Yes. Okay. Now we'll oh. go back to the slide. Um, back over to Google. There, connect with passing notes and interesting rhythms. rhythms. And also in bass lines, silence is golden. <gasps> So it's important that we don't just fill it all up with notes. No. Bass players, if you watch your favourite songs played live, they often are going to have lots of times when they're not playing. I have noticed that. You've noticed it? Yep. Okay. And you can hear that there's no bass if, yeah. you, if you're listening for it too. Yeah. Because when it comes in, it's amazing. And that's part of the title of this presentation, Drop the Beat, because where beat. all the big ah. low sounds come in after a bit of silence. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we'll go back to Ableton and we're going to fill in the, uh, the bass line with those passing notes and interesting rhythms that I mentioned before. Now a passing note is just basically some, something that connects the, the dots between here and here. You can think of it like that. Yep. Uh, and it, it creates a bit of a, yeah, join the dots essentially. So we've got this one here. Yeah. We could just do a couple of notes. We could even do that. And I can see it goes from A and then G, F, E, D, C down to the bottom. That's These are all passing notes. Yeah. Okay, they're not part of the chord, they just create Oh, a, bit a bit of, of interest. A bit of interest, yeah. that's right. So we might want to maybe do a couple of repeated notes at the start yes. just for fun and then maybe we might do a little up above it then come down. Yeah. And I actually like I like the idea of that, so I'm <laughs> going to repeat it. I think this could be a, a real hit single. I think it will be, definitely. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and so now patterns are always good in music, so I've got just, just a little pattern there. Yes. But still, the first notes remain where they were on the fourth yes the fifth and the sixth like you composed yep and we could change these other notes anywhere we like this is random and then yep. join the dots down here now somehow we've got to get back to the four so there's four yeah i might even just do another little line like that we'll see what it sounds like by itself okay sounds really cool sounds all right i don't like this note I'm going to actually make that one there. We'll see what happens. Let's see what it sounds like. Okay. Might have been being a bit picky there. <laughs> and now I'll put the drum beat in with it. So it's in time. And now this is the real litmus test if the chords match it as well. Oh. So okay. I'm going to press play, it'll cue up. Here we go. That is so cool. Isn't that cool? <gasps> that's really good. You're so, so clever. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess that's the point is it's it's one thing, it's it's not that clever really when you know the, the little rules and formulas that go with it. That's one, great. four, five and six for the chords. The four on the floor on the back beat. Yeah. Plus just some hi hats there. Uh, and then the idea of passing notes and silence in the bass. The bass is really interesting to me because you can really hear that when, when you're playing that back. Yeah. But it just looks very random what you, what you did there. It I looks mean, pretty random. You are a musician. But oh, yeah. Well, just following <laughs> it sounds some so of, good. Thank you. It's, well, you helped to, comp terrific. to compose it. So we'll go back over to the, the slides now and we'll see what we've got next. Um, so silence is golden. Now adjust to taste. Mm. And this is where we start to be able to personalise the music a little bit personalize the music. So this this drum beat, 
is pretty standard. What if we just adjust some of the things just by a cell or two? Yeah, I we'll might... get that. Yeah, there we go. It's up oh, on the screen. Oh, there it is up oh, on the go. screen. So uh, what we could do... Yeah, it does what... sound pretty standard, doesn't it's it? It's pretty standard. Yeah. So what about we just pick um, pick a couple of these at random and move them slightly? Oh, oh. Okay, and maybe, okay. maybe we can just add... This is actually really totally random what I'm doing here. <laughs> I might, I'll put that one there and I'll put this <gasps> one there. I might even add a couple more oh. there just for fun. <gasps> okay. And what about, you know I mentioned patterns before. I yes. might go with the pattern idea. So I've got, these are where they originally were. Then I move the yep. third one by a bit. Yes. That's where it originally was. Same pattern here. Okay, and we'll okay. just see what happens. Oh, so it's a bit funkier. Just a little, maybe it's a bit, a bit funkier. funkier. <laughs> yeah. Now we can add some other things in here. Oh, we can, what about the clap? You want to clap? Oh yeah. So actually, why don't we turn these two into claps? Oh yeah, that'd be great. A little that's clap cool. at the end, and yeah, we can put good. it here as well, just for fun. Yeah, I like it. You liking that? I do. And then, <laughs> and then we can also we've got toms here. Oh, now what are toms? Toms are the drums that are kind of the in between the lowest kick drum sound yep. and the snare. Oh, that they're, sounds They're still okay. pretty low. Yep. So we might want to go, for example, uh, how about we go, let's see. Oh, I like the, to oh yes, I like the tom. And let's do the pattern and put them there again. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> okay. <laughs> It's a mishmash. Let's it's a just bit say. of a mishmash, and you can you can adjust for hours, but we don't have hours. Uh, <laughs> and you might even want to just add a few extra of these, just as even a bit more variety. There we go. There's our oh, beat for today. It's very complicated. UCTV <laughs> beat. beat. But it all the key is it all started from following those rules. Yes. Four on the floor. Yes. Back beat and then adjust. Yeah, that's okay. great. And we could do similar. Th well, we've already got our bass line here. Yep. Uh, we're going to leave that how it is. Yeah. We can adjust the rhythm of these, so we don't just have our our chords playing on the beat. Could each they time. play? Could could they be a bit faster? Like they're quite lo like. Mm, they could, could they be shorter? Is what I mean. Some, Sorry. We could shorter. put some rhythm in. A good idea is to follow something something here oh, as well. Okay. Yep. So look at this. We've delayed the kick beat here by two. So why don't we try delaying the chords? This one here yep. by the same amount. Yep. So I'm just going to make them shorter by two, and then I'm going to move them all along too. Ah. Okay. Yes. And then I think we did the same here, so let's do the same yeah. thing. It looks like a pretty easy program it's pretty to easy use. To use, yeah. Once you you know have the basics. Yeah, it is. Okay, so now we've got. Missing a bit of low end, isn't it? Yeah, missing the bass. Let's get the bass in. Let's Here we go. Let's do it. That's really good. Okay. And if I'm if I'm really adjusting to taste, this is the last thing I'll do. Let's have a listen. No, I like it just how just like that. Okay. So we've all of a sudden made made a beat and let's go oh. let's assume we've adjusted to taste and we'll go back to the slide oh of course we've got to add something else in well, we don't have to you could then you could have that and you could compose you could get some lyrics and compose a melody over the top of that I won't ask you to do that right now no I, I will not be singing we'll go to um, <laughs> we'll go, <laughs> we could add a, a little riff so we were oh yes we earlier. were talking earlier now Dave tell us what's a riff a riff is just a short little melody that often can be the hook in a, in a tune. Uh, so you've got the main melody, which is what the singer sings. Yes. And a riff is something that's often without words, that's played by an instrument. Um, yeah, that often repeats throughout a song. So give us some examples. So uh, a famous bass riff is um, Another One Bites the Dust. That's it. Are you going to hum it? <laughs> Would you like to do the honors? Okay. Don't laugh, everyone. <laughs> I'm going to do the, I'm going to mime it as well. Dum, dum. Dum, da -dum, dum, dum, da -dum. That's it. That's it. Yeah, there's yep. the bass riff. As soon as you play that, everyone knows that's another one bites the dust. Uh, or they should do. They should. That's right, they should do. 
Uh, there are there are others, and you just have to listen to most pop songs, and you'll be able to and identify a, riff. a little riff somewhere. Oh, yeah, it's really interesting. Uh, if yeah. Yep. But the hook is something sometimes a bit different. If you say the word hook, did you say that sometimes the chorus? Is that right? The hook in a pop song can be the chorus. It could be the chorus. Yeah. yeah. For example, uh, what's a what's a pop song that everyone would know? What about We Will Rock You? Okay, We Will On Rock You. On a Queen you. theme. Yeah. We Will, so we will, we will rock, you rock You has probably two hooks. It's got that hook that you just sang. Yep. Um, and then it's got the drum, the drum hook as well. The stomp, stomp, clap. Yep. Stomp, stomp. Yep. So you could almost describe that as a riff, a drum yeah, riff, right. that also is the hook. So the hook's the catchy bit that's kind of memorable about a song. Yep. Sometimes you might hear um, some songs become described as earworms, uh -huh. where they get in your yep. head and you can't stop humming them. That's right. And that's probably because they've got a really memorable riff and or hook. And because they've followed these rules, yep. they, they, these rules often create earworms. Yes, right. Yeah. Yep. Um, <laughs> and so let's try and create an earworm. Out, Let's out do of, it. Out of the melodies. Totally. Okay. For our hit song. <laughs> now, with one thing that's important here is that in this program, um, we've got options along the top here. Uh, we've got the, the the root note, which we've chosen as C. C, yeah. Uh, but we could we could make that higher and make it E. And you can see the letters change along here into what becomes oh, an yes. E. Oh, so that will sound major totally different. It will sound it? different. And it will sound really bad if I put this chord... <laughs> along with the bass that we had before, which is still Oh, because NC. they're not matched up. They're is not that matched up. Yeah. Let's have a listen and see what happens. Oh, whoops, hang on. Here. Oh. <laughs> oh, that sounds terrible. It's kind of... Even to my untrained ear, there you that's go. not right, and is it's, it? It's simply because it's in a different key. Oh, right. So we're going to put that back to C. Yeah, good. <laughs> and we're going to have different moods here with our major oh. or minor. We might get into that later if we have time. Yeah. But as long as the melodies box is selected with the same uh, scale, yes. then we can't really go wrong. Right. It's always good to start on the, on the, the one. Okay, so we'll just put a one in here. Yep. And now why don't we do this totally at randomly. Okay. Uh, I want you to uh, just tell me to go up or down. Okay. Up. Okay. Up. Up. Down. Uh, okay. I'm or gonna, not. Yeah, no. <laughs> perfect. No, good choice. I'll go down to this one. Yes. Um, now, am I doing a sort of the next four? Is that, yeah. is that how you do it? Uh, well, we could just see what that sounds like. All right. It's a really short riff right. to start. Mm. Well, it's a well, start. Well, it sort of matches what we did in the other... Yeah. It's with the chords, what if we it? What if we repeat it so okay. it becomes a real earworm? It sounds a little bit like a computer game at the moment, <laughs> doesn't it's it? It's important to note that this program <laughs> is limited in its sound sources. <laughs> so it sounds like a computer program because this has only it's got a, the one choice of sound. It's all right. It could be a really trendy sound for our song. Let's see what happens. Mm. Okay, ready? Technology, after all. Our bass and our chords. Okay, and here comes our riff. The second time it's not so good. Maybe we want to adjust the second one to taste. I don't like that last one. Adjust note. What to about taste, we, Dave. Yep. <laughs> what about we make it go up? Oh yeah, that's that's happy. You like that? Yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. So this would become our riff, and then you'd eventually walk away from hearing that. Over the course of a song, you might hear that maybe do, 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 do. Eight, or tw eight or ten or twelve times. Yeah. And then you'd be talking to your friends and you'd be saying, have you heard that new song by that artist Louise? And Dave. And Dave, <laughs> Louise and Dave. And, it and then if you don't remember the words, you'd be able to remember the riff. Oh, that's da -da 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 -da. right. Because that's what a lot of people do when they're trying to um, describe a song to you. Yep. Um, you know, I can't remember the song, but it goes like this. And that's what they do, I think there are it? two types of people. I think there's... The ones who remember and the ones who... No, no, no. <laughs> there's people who remember the words and there's people yes, who remember, remember the, the, the music, the yes, tune. Yes, that's right. And I'm definitely a, a riff singer like that. Yep. I'd be like... Doo -doo 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 -doo. Yep. But then someone else might go, uh, you know, remember that song? You know that song that I heard on the radio that goes... We yeah. will, we will rock you for a I was going to make something up about UCTV, but that's okay. <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. UCTV. There we go, yeah. Um, okay, so there's there's that. And, and if we go back to the, the slide just briefly, you can see that I've got there. It's important to start simple and then adjust with all these things. Oh, that's wonderful. And, and so you notice that, you know, we've, we've only got 
uh, one, two, three, four, five, five notes. Yep. And you might want some more notes later on, but you just start simple and then you can adjust from there. Yeah, so you're sort of laying the foundations for it. That's right. And then you can add in sort of extra things if, if you want to. Sometimes exactly. simple is, is good. Simple is good. Mm. And, and with pop music, uh, there, are, there are whole genres that, genres that, uh, that really strip it back to super simple. Yeah. Sometimes they even cut out the, uh, one of those layers. They might not have any chords. Yeah. And they might they just, just have, have the bass that. and the yeah, drums. Yeah, right. Uh, and then occasional little riffs here and there. <gasps> Look, this is brilliant. Sure, I reckon we'll have a five-minute break for you to think of some questions. And um, and if we haven't got lots of questions, we've got lots more things that we can we have can... a look at. I have many things that we could yeah, that I'd yeah. love you to do. Okay. So let's go for our five-minute break now, everyone. And if you have some questions for Dave, pop them into the chat and we'll see you in five minutes. Welcome back, everyone. We have got some great questions in. Dave and I were just having a look at them. So let's have a look at the first one. This is from Declan. He's in grade six at St Paul's. Hi, Declan. And Declan wants to know, Dave, what is the hardest instrument to play? Well, That's a good question. Isn't it a good question? Yeah. Thanks, Declan. Uh, probably it's, uh, it's, a, it's a really tricky one to answer. I personally find the flute particularly difficult to make a good sound on oh, because so, of the because of the yeah the getting the lips mm. in the right in the right position now there's probably lots of people watching who learn the flute mm. who are like flute's easy yeah it's the trumpet that i struggle with yeah or the accordion or the accordion right <laughs> so i guess you know there's arguments about this all through throughout time trumpets tricky because you've got to get the buzzing with your lips yes but then there's only three valves to push so oh. that's that's kind of that just makes combinations that a of three. little bit easier yeah yep. whereas the flute you've got to make the sound there the piano you've got to play up to 10 or 12 notes at a time and and your foot going as with well. the feet as well mm. accordion you've got to do that mm. with the buttons and the so um Declan there's no clear answer but uh, I would say that flute is my For you, the flute. nemesis when it comes to <laughs> instruments what about the piccolo I've never had a go, but I imagine that that's another a step, step, step higher. Step higher. Yeah. Level um, up. Good question, Declan. Harry, from grade six at St Paul's as well. Hi, Harry. Have you ever played the bagpipes? Oh, Harry, it's it's a bit of a life goal of mine to learn how to play <laughs> the bagpipes. I um, I had a toy bagpipe set when I was when I was a young child. My mum went to Scotland and brought back a toy bagpipe. How cool. Yeah, and I was really excited to play it, but it was such a toy that no matter what I did with my fingers, oh. the, the, the sound didn't change, the pitch didn't change. So uh, I have never played them, but I would like to. I would like to learn to play the bagpipes as well, but I'm not sure. Wonder, they look really I hard. I wonder if Harry learns the bagpipes. Yeah. Might. Lots At of younger people start with just the chanter. The, um, the, it's like... It's without the bag. They just oh. kind of learn how to play it and then yep. the rest of it And comes. then they put the other mm. bit in. I, to me, I think the bag, bagpipes would be one of the most difficult yep. instruments to learn. Um, here's a question from Charlie. Hi, Charlie, one of our regular viewers. Charlie yeah. is home educated and he wants to ask, can music make people feel a certain emotion? Oh, oh what a good question. Charlie, well, you just had to see Louise's face when we were composing our music <laughs> before. She was feeling pretty chirpy, oh, uh, nice. as was I. Mm. Uh, yeah, it can definitely make us feel different emotions, and there's a number of ways to do that. The main ways are, um, remember I spoke about major and minor yes. and all the other options along there? So, look, a really basic way is that uh, there are always exceptions to this rule, but happier songs mm. tend to be in a major, major key, chord, and yep, minor key. songs yep. tend to have a bit more of a... A, a, a sad or somber sort of feel yes. and also the tempo can impact that if you've got tempos that are um, at about 100 110 120 beats per minute yeah so every second is a beat per minute so seconds are at 60 beats per minute yes and so double that is 120 beats per minute yeah when they get up in those numbers they're a bit more upbeat and they tend to make us want to dance and yeah things like, like disco that. and things like for that for example yep. whereas slower ballads can be a bit more emotional. Would you like me to demonstrate just a bit of moving to the sad? Yes. We could just take our thing that we've done. Yes. If we just flip to Ableton, um, I'll just put my earpiece in here. So we'll press play on the drums and we'll slow the whole thing down. Maybe just, well, let's go to 70. 
So 70 beats per minute. 70 beats per minute. Yeah. So just a bit more than a second, a bit quicker than a second, and then we'll turn it into a minor key. The only thing that changed were that the notes here, the E's, A's, and B's became flats. I'll just keep yeah. your eyes here and I'll show you. Yeah. No flats for major? Yeah. Flats. Oh, yeah. So the actual notes are going to change. I'll do the same because we saw what happened when we didn't yeah. do that last <laughs> you have time. Yeah, to keep it. So now we're all in minor. So it's going to sound very different, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, let's see what happens. Here's our bass. Let's get our chords. And maybe our riff. I like that better. You like it better, right? I think that sounds really good. Isn't it amazing just changing the tempo and from a major to a minor key? Makes a huge difference. Doesn't it? I wonder what happens if we change the tempo up to double what it is now. Bring it up to 120. We've got a disco hit there. <laughs> or a techno hit. A techno hit, maybe. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So. Was it Charlie that asked? Yeah, that Charlie. Question? Yep. That was a great, great, great question, question, Charlie. I also think with emotion and music, if you hear some songs at a certain time in your life, or some music at a certain time, or you're looking back mm -hmm. um, to when you were younger, perhaps, and you liked a certain song, yep. it can evoke a lot of memories of that time as well. Yeah. Music's really powerful like that too. It really isn't it? is, and there's a lot of a lot of research into brains that connect those 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 memories and mm. make the brain light up in in the areas that that show that we're feeling good, oh, essentially. Yeah. yeah, even some of the sad associations yes. with songs still, it, when it's in the future, yeah. um, makes our brains feel, good. makes our bodies feel good. Wow, so it's like very, very powerful. Our viewers might have favorite songs that their their parents sang to them when they were really small, or maybe yeah. some nursery rhymes or things like that, that they might look back on now and they're just really familiar. And, yeah, and, and evokes, yeah, yeah, evokes lovely feelings. Mm. That's great, thanks Charlie. Um, oh, St Paul's, you have been very busy. Kobe from Grade 6 at St Paul's. Good what is the most expensive instrument you have ever purchased? Oh, oh that's a good question. Kobe. <laughs> oh, that's, that's a good question. Uh, I have, actually I have an accordion that cost me, do you want to, the question didn't ask for details, but I'll share anyway. <laughs> I, I spent three and a half thousand dollars on my accordion. Wow. But that, that for some musicians is still pretty cheap. Yep. I saw an accordion on sale for fifty-seven thousand dollars. <gasps> was it an antique or something? No, it was just a very super fancy wow. accordion with lots of features. You would want to be getting a lot of busking money to pay That's back right. the fifty-seven thousand dollars. This is this is true. Yep. Um Oh, gee, there's some really good questions here. Sorry, I'm just skipping forward. Oh, Charlie said, thanks for answering my question. You are welcome, no Charlie. Worries. Here's a question from Tom. What is your favourite music program to use? Oh, good question, Tom. Mm. Uh, look, this might be a, a question I can answer with one of the slides as well, if that's okay. I've got one final slide that is just their programs. Oh, yes, yeah. Um, so there are different levels of programs Tom, that you can you can use. You sound like you might even know a few of these already. Many of you will be familiar with GarageBand, which is free. Yeah. GarageBand's a really a really fun one to get involved just at a really beginner level. Yeah. Uh, and now online uh, in the cloud, there's these other ones, BandLab and Soundtrap, as well as Soundation is another one that I didn't put there. Yeah. Uh, they're both fun. As a teacher, I use BandLab a lot. Yeah. Uh, with my students. But as a professional musician, when I'm not a teacher, yeah. uh, I use a combination of uh, Ableton yes. and and Pro Tools as well. Pro Tools for, for different different purposes. So, Tom, when I'm making when I'm making beats like this, I'll use Ableton, which is good. It's got some interesting features, which I won't go into now. And for recording music, uh, Pro Tools is is the one Pro that I tools. use. But there's lots of really good ones. That um, that's a great answer, Dave. Because Amani from St Paul's has sort of asked a related question: Is this program available as an app? Ah. And if so, is it free? Well, it's not free because Ableton's paid. But is it an app or it's a computer so, program, isn't it? Is that what right? was the name of the Amani? Amani, Amani. The program that I used to show you everything today. Uh, is free. That's a website. Oh, that's free. That, that's okay. called, uh, the website address is learningmusic.ableton.com. And I went to a specific part called the playground. Uh, and so that's free. 
and there's lots of other music making apps that look like what I showed you today with grid notation that are free. Yep. Uh, and then to go further with it, um, you can like I, yeah, like I said, so BandLab and Soundtrap both have apps that you can that you can download for free. You set up an account. Yep. GarageBand's free with iPads, uh, but the other more professional ones you have to pay for them. Right. Um, okay. So Ableton, it's free for part of it, but then you have to pay for. So the actual program is paid. Right. But the program okay. doesn't yep. look very much like what I showed you today. That this is just the education. Oh, you know, okay. Yeah. Yep. So, oh, that was a good question, Amani. Yeah. Um, Harry from Grade Six at St Paul's, have you ever recorded a song using this program? Uh, so, I've recorded. Uh, I've recorded songs using a bunch of different programs. Uh, Ableton is one that I've used a lot, Sound, uh, both Soundtrap and BandLab. I've recorded things in. As a teacher last year, I recorded the whole school. We weren't allowed to sing during lockdown as a, as a whole group, oh, yes. but I recorded small groups singing and then with BandLab, which I've actually got, if we skip to the, the other screen there, I opened up BandLab before. And uh, this, is what, this is what the next level up looks like. Looks like it might be oh. cut off the screen there a little bit, but essentially you can uh, you can create different tracks. You know, you might want to put your voice over the top, and then you hook up a microphone. We won't do it today, but uh, whoops, okay. And then you can add loops. Maybe I can add a quick loop in there. Oh no, we probably don't have time. So now, that one looks a little bit more complicated. It's complicated, but with with BandLab, it's still, yeah, yeah, you can still find things just, just by clicking around and yeah. experimenting. Yeah. And there are good tutorial videos. Oh. And, you know, I really recommend to everyone to just get in, get in there and, and play around. And there are, there are drum machines like what we use today, the grid notation, yep. that can get you started. We have only got about five minutes left, Dave, which is very sad. Um, but I thought, just before I sort of wind everything up, mm -hmm. if we go back to our song, mm -hmm. Is there any anything we could do to it fairly quickly to make it sound, I don't know, like a disco track perhaps? Disco? Or, or some, some other sort of we definitely, genre of yeah. music? I did say reggae to you, but you said you thought that might be a bit tricky. Well, we could, we could, try, we could try both. Okay, we've got five minutes. So disco, a disco beat. So we think yeah. about a classic like, um, uh, 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 staying alive, staying alive. So we're at about 110 beats per minute there, I reckon. I'll see how accurate I am. In my earpiece. Uh, uh, staying alive, staying alive. So there we go, we're at the right tempo. Uh, now a classic, we're gonna just change our beat altogether. So I'll clear that. And many people will know, if you've ever done any beatboxing, you'd know the boots and cats. Have you ever heard I love of all these sayings. Have you heard of boots and cats <laughs> before? Okay, I'll show you boots and cats. So this is like a classic sort of classic beat. disco beat. Love it. Yeah. Yeah. It looks something like I may have missed a couple of these. We'll just see. Okay, so you can beatbox it by going boots and cats and boots oh, and that's cats so and it cool. works. Okay. <laughs> so we got that. That's a pretty classic disco beat. We might even put two of these just to make it really disco like. Okay. Okay. And then just with that different drum beat. We've got one minute. Okay, we'll get our disco. <laughs> hey, that sounds great. All of a sudden we've got disco. No, this is our new song. Okay. And then of course, to make it reggae, we just slow it down. Maybe just get rid of mm, that. I like disco. You like disco better? I think so. Let's finish with disco. Yeah, finish with disco. There we go. That is really cool. So it's amazing that, that difference you can make just by changing some of those things but I think keeping those rules in place. The rules are really important yeah. to, to start with and then that adjust to taste idea where you just get to play around with it after you've followed the rules. That's fantastic. I think I might go and have a, um, well we need to have a play with it and make got, our hit single. We've got a recording session to go we to. Have. Yeah. No singing from me. <laughs>
Dave, thank you so much for coming on the program today. It was absolutely fantastic. And I hope you've all been inspired to perhaps have a look at some of those programs that Dave mentioned and download them and, and start experimenting. And you're the next sort of crop of musicians and hope to hear from some of you. Now, we're going to take a break for about three weeks because school holidays are coming up. When we return on the 20th of October, we're going to have Marie Backer back on the program. Some of you might have uh, might have seen a couple of shows that we've done with Marie. We haven't got our topic yet, but it will be something to do with sustainability and it will be something very interesting and practical that Marie will be doing with us. And that's all for now, everybody. Thanks so much for your company. See you next time. <laughs>